you know, the cannabinoid system is unique because it is so well pervasive. And what we're seeing now on a biochemical level is quite amazing. We're seeing both hybrid receptors and hybrid ligands. Receptors, we talk about our cannabinoid receptors, right? Cannabinoids, be they are naturally produced ones like anandamide, the blissful amide, or uh, ones that we take in from the plant, THC. Those compounds bind to receptors that are on cell surfaces, in particular, let's say, on nervous cell surfaces. They change the structure of that molecule, here's a membrane, on, in the cell. This is in the cell. Yeah. And that activates different chemical activities, like kinase activities, you know, from these, this known as G-coupled G protein receptors, all right? Those kinase activities, in turn, modulate enzyme activities, which is now modulating biochemical flow. Some of the ones that get modulated are transcription factors. So now you're changing expression patterns. So what you're doing is you're changing the gestalt of that cell and how it interfaces with its environment. So in terms of cannabinoid receptors, they now document and scientifically show that there are these amazing hybrid receptors where you have a cannabinoid receptor subunit interacting with a dopamine subunit receptor, mm. or you have a cannabinoid receptor so that both together as one molecule, mm. uh, a, um, a a serotonin receptor. Mm -hmm. So these are profound molecules. Dopamines are affecting you know all addictive behaviors, which are in part because of their reward system. They're giving you pleasure. This is part of feedback. Mm -hmm. Go back to the idea of the system again. You know. Yeah and how you create new stable steady states through modulating system interfaces, allosterism, all right? Yeah. So that's what we have happening here with dopamine receptors. Serotonin receptors are involved in all sorts of emotional states, psychedelics, all coming out from hybrid receptors interfacing with the cannabinoid system mm -hmm. as the regulator of stress, yeah. the ultimate regulator of stress. On the one hand, it gives us the food, so that the system can move further from equilibrium. Then it modulates all of our systems that are interacting with our environment, you know, our immune system, our musculoskeletal system, yeah. our cardiovascular system. All of these are being modulated, our consciousness, through this unique, powerful property of the cannabinoid system to be this global homeostatic regulator that's going to impact on a subcellular, a cellular, and a social level. Is there a uh, way to upregulate natural endocannabinoids in the body as opposed to... Exercise upregulates anandamide. Yeah. And, you know, we know exercise is good. Yeah. It's all part of this holistic viewpoint of what's happening here, you know. If you look at essential fatty acids, eating omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils, hemp oil, you know, primrose oil, all these seed oils... What's good about them, in part, is that they turn into endocannabinoids mm -hmm. and help support that whole lipid meta metabolism that's modulated by and, and fundamental to the cannabinoid system and to the working of our brains mm -hmm. and to the working of everything within us. You know, endocannabinoids from metabolites of endocan endocannabinoids and endocannabinoid metabolites, metabolites modulate things like the health of your heart. And the infarct size, if you have a heart attack, it's all regulated by the cannabinoid system. So, which is then pumping the blood and feeding the cells. You know, it's all part of this whole story here. And the cannabinoids, everywhere you look, are doing things that are essential for our survival. And our survival, not only from the point of view of how we got where we are, but where we're going.